What up, guys? Here we are again. I'm in Peru and uh, Cusco, technically, and we're just doing quick hitter uh, beer reviews. If you haven't seen the other couple that I put up, I'm just I'm in town for a little bit, and I wanted to do as many as local beers as I could, and just toss them up, and so you guys can see them and comment and tell me if I should check out any other beers or whatever while I'm in town. So that's why there's no you know intros or information about it. So I apologize on that. Some of these beers are being a little difficult to find anything on, but figured, you know, at least you'll know if you come to Peru what kind of beers are waiting for you. And um, I'll talk about this. I don't think this is a twist off. Wow. This is, oh, well, so I should probably introduce the beer first. <laughs> first beer, this is called Crystal. Crystal. It is the first non, um, whatever the brand is, it is the first non. Casquino beer that I'll be reviewing. So, the hotel's little mini fridge where you take it out and they charge you 50 gazillion dollars for the beer. Uh, this one I bought for like a dollar twenty. <laughs> um, so, anyways, this is the first non Casquina beer that I'll be checking out. But as I and I want to thank my lovely uh, my one of my best friends and his lovely wife who just got married in outside of St. Petersburg. And I just kind of continued down south. Um, one of the wedding gifts they gave was a little key to my heart kind of thing, but it's a bottle opener, most importantly. So thank you. I am putting your gift too well, I mean, to work. So anyways, as I pour this, um, I will be also be putting together what I'm calling a micro bruise traveler. And... I'm focusing on cities, places in other parts of the world, and the the micro beer and micro breweries that are there. Because let's face it, in the United States we have so many. I mean, there's like one in every street corner now. It's we get just flooded with it, and we don't really know what's going on in other parts of the world. And I thought it'd be pretty interesting to check out the micro beer everywhere else because. Again, we don't hear, hear anything about it. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna, those videos will come out in a couple weeks. I'll have one about Cusco and one for Lima. And it'll just be, well, it should be interesting. And I'll have, there'll be all the whole nine yards graphics, whatever. It, I'm gonna try to make it the most professionally done videos that I have on this station so far, or channel, or whatever. Anyways, I got Cristal poured. Like many of the other beers, you could not make this clearer. This is, very very clear so actually of the this will be the fifth beer that I've done one of these four this is only one of them has been cloudy and that was the wheat beer but all right so there it is let's just oh and I'll read you the information about it it was uh, I'm assuming 1922 is when they started which is you know kind of around the same time when the Coronas and those particular beers came out I think Coronas 1925 or 26. I'm drawing one of those two years, and I mean, then and Modelo, the same, you know, people, so they both came out at the same time. Um, alcohol content. This is again 5% alcohol. Every single beer outside of the uh, the Negra from Casquina has been 5%. So maybe everyone's just using the exact same recipe. I don't know. Anyways, let's get into the smell. All right, I mean, it, it definitely tastes, I mean, smells like uh, your kind of traditional Pilsner. I don't know if they said this was a, I'm assuming this is a Pilsner. If it doesn't say anything about that. Other than you have to be 18 or older to drink. Um, so, it kind of smells like your run-of-the-mill Pilsner. There's nothing jumping out at you. If you smelled one semi-cheap produced Pilsner, you've kind of smelled all of them. It doesn't have as much of the skunky aroma that you might get. I, I always associate this like this smell that you get when you crack open a label with certain, especially European beers, like, there's like a, with like Elephant, and um, <clears throat> there's some Italian beers that I'm, but there's a lot of beers that it just has that almost like skunky Pilsner-y thing that you, you, it just smells not enticing. And it doesn't have that necessarily the skunkiness going to it. So you can definitely, you can smell like the, the, the grain that's going on. Little lemon zesty. 
overall not bad. It's um, for the simple fact that it is uh, it does not have that skunk aroma. I'm going to recommend it for this one. So ding. <laughs> um, all right, next category is the taste. And sorry that I'm a little out of breath. You know the altitude here is like six thousand meters, and it, the city is very hilly, like substantial. And I was just ooh, some of these. The thing about stairs is there's always almost more. So you go up a hill and there's more stairs and you're just like, I want to die. And so I'm kind of still sucking in air from that. So I, if I be up here short-winded, I kind of am. <laughs> but um, okay, here's the, uh, the taste. Actually, I mean, it's not terrible. Maybe. <laughs> it's, um, it's okay. It's, um, I think it's one of those kind of, if you just want a beer that doesn't taste god-awful and you probably me on tap somewhere, this is kind of the beer you're going to go for. It's, you know, maybe it's like the, the country's Budweiser or Miller or something like that. But, I mean, it's not terrible. There's not a lot of flavor going on with it. Again, a little raisiny. If you've looked at the other Peru videos, the videos so far, they all have like this kind of raisiny thing going on, and I, I'm not sure why. I haven't seen like a ton of raisins. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place. It's kind of like when I went to Thailand. None of the Thai food I had had peanuts in it, but for some reason, you go to the United States and it's drenched in peanuts. So I don't know. There is a an inherent bitterness to it. It's definitely not from like a hoppy bitterness. It's that's just how it tastes. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it. And I think if you drink this warm, it's gonna be terrible. I think it's one of those beers that where as long as you drink it cold, you can deal with it. But once it starts to get warm and that like grain flavor just completely takes over, God help you. Because that's kind of what I'm getting with this. Uh, so I don't know with this one. It's a... Uh, I'll give it a half. I don't, don't really know what to do with it. It's, it's not like I'm going to run into the room and gag or it's just, but it's just, I mean, it's, it's an inexpensive. It's probably the country's Budweiser. So, all right, next category is uh, value for price. This thing costs 350 soul, so 3 soul and 50 cents, or however you, they say it. I have um, some coins right here. Centmos. Centimos. Is there an I? There is an I right there. So I actually sent and then emos. So three solas, which is like dollars, and then centimos, which equates to, I just checked the exchange rate, one dollar equals, one American dollar equals like three dollars and three solas and twenty centimos. So you're almost, this is almost a little more than a buck. So like a dollar five, basically. So, <laughs> good luck finding that cheaper in most places. So for value for price, it's gonna be hard to beat that. So, ding, go for that. Okay, next is distinction. Now distinct is it, and quite frankly, it's not. I don't even need to sip on it more to tell you it is not distinct. It is just kind of your run of the mill. Um, Pilsner that you're going to find in every single country you go to, in every corner of the world, they have this beer. It's got a different label, and a different name brand, but it's the exact same beer you're going to have. Where, I don't know, maybe Mr. Beer Kit sells, you know, beer recipes throughout the world, and they all are just using the same thing. But it's not distinct, so I will not recommend it on distinction. Alright. Okay, next category is drinkability, and um, let's see. Sorry, mainly I ripped a hole in my pants. Damn it. Those dang stairs. <laughs> Those like 600 year old stairs that are, you know, like this tall. And you're just like, like, you're going to have a massive leg workout. But um, 
drinkability, it's... I think as long as you get keep them cold, you're going to be able to keep them coming. And it's got 5% alcohol, which I think Budweiser and Miller is like, is that like 4.2? Between 4.2 and 4.4. So you got a slight edge on it. Um, so if you keep it cold, you can probably get through a couple. I'm not saying you'd want to, but uh, so I'm going to give it a half on that. You could probably do it. You might not want to, but so yeah. And okay, last category is would I buy it again? And honestly, no. Um, I'm betting that I'm going to be able to find at least one other beer that tastes better than this. And quite frankly, I'm not like the, I don't, Pilsner is not like my go-to kind of thing. If I can find one that's well done, which is probably one of the hardest things to do in the beer industry, it is very, very difficult to find a, an exceptionally well done Pilsner. That's why, I mean, most micro brewer, uh, breweries completely stick, stay away from the um, Pilsner as well for two reasons. One, it's incredibly hard, and two, it takes longer to make a, a, a lager than an ale, so they're going to stick with the ales. But, um, it's just hard to do. Like an IPA, you can cover it up when it sucks. I'm like, okay, this beer sucks. Let's make it super hoppy and you'll never know. Same thing with the sour beer. It's like, this beer sucks. Let's make it super sour. With the Pilsner, that's it. The Pilsner is kind of like the steak of the food group. It's like, you got it and that's it. If it's a crappy steak, you're going to know it as soon as you like put your knife into it. You, that no amount of A1 or whatever is gonna do anything about. So, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah. Um, it's hard to find a really good Pilsner, and this is not a really good Pilsner, so I'm gonna just go with some notes. So I will not be getting it again. But, all right, that is my review of uh, La Cerveza del Peru Cristal, La Campiona de la Calidad. I apologize for how I just read all of that. For anyone that speaks Spanish, I know I completely killed it. And not in a good way. But, um, so yeah, that is my review. If you have any kind of Peruvian beers or like anything like that for me to check out, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to try to hit it up while I'm in, in the area. And so, um, if you could like, subscribe, comment, that'd be fantastic. But for now, until my next quick hitter and the other stuff that will be coming in the future, for me and for Crystal, take it easy.